Well, no, thank you for the invitation. Let me set it up. Um, even though in the program I was listed uh, as uh, professor at the National Jiaotong University, but actually my base is here. I spend most of the time here. Um, I traveled to Taiwan um, about two, twice or three times a year, and actually I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. works. Okay, um, so the title of my presentation is Cognitive State Monitoring and Management. As you know, this is definitely not limited to the car drivers or vehicle drivers. And again, my name is really difficult to pronounce, so you just call me T.P. Jong. And uh, this is really a close correlation, uh, a collaborations between the Schwarz Center for Computational Neuroscience at UCSD and the uh, Brain Research Centers at the Department of Computer Science at National Jiao Tong University in Xinchu, Taiwan. And uh, the lab was led by the provost of the NCTU, CT Dean. And this is our director, Scott McKay, our directors at uh, SCCN. Uh, Scott and I actually have been working uh, on the, uh, the EEG dynamics uh, in sustained attention tests since 1993. Um, the, well, actually, the objective of this study is, is trying to, to investigate event-related brain dynamics during continuous sustained attention tasks instead of really discrete or buttoned uh, choice responses in most of the ERP paradigms. And we're also trying to explore EEG and behavior changes induced by land deviations event, which basically is driving uh, simulations and subject responses and arousing feedback presented to drowsy drivers. Um, this, Another goal of this research is to build a, a brain machine interface featuring dry man's EEG sensors, uh, actually not limited to man's, and miniaturized bioamps, um, analog digital uh, uh, converters, and wireless telemetries that can continuously monitor the brain dynamics of the patients, or actually the participants, actively performing normal tasks in real world environment. Okay. I'm going to show you later on. Uh, as I mentioned, well, the first part of the research is really the fundamental cognitive neuroscience, and the second part is the EEG or brain-computer interface applications. Okay, as I mentioned, we've been studying this uh, um, EEG dynamics in sustained attention text until recently. Well, that includes, for instance, the radar simulators and simulations and audio target uh, identifications and uh, compensatory visual tracking tasks. Uh, until recently, uh, NCCU has built this three-dimensional 3D uh, immersive virtual reality environment, and we have uh, motion platforms, six degree of freedom motion platform. On top of that, we actually mount uh, real vehicles. So subjects, we have collected uh, more than probably 200 um, uh, EEG sessions from over 100 subjects. So this is the driving simulator we use. We're trying to get a real realistic and safe environment so we can repeatedly test the EEG dynamic response in response to different events. So to give you a flavor of these simulators, so this is one of the sessions, for instance. Well, in this case, you know, this is actually a little bit wild. In this case, we are trying to study the EEG dynamics in motion sickness. Um, so this is our motion platform. This is rough, I know. Um, then with this kind of uh, facilities, the first thing we want to do is to design really realistic and um, sort of, uh, and um, dynamic environment. So Ray Song Huang, um, my student and now postdoc, 
has developed this event-related sustained attention tax. So basically, this is uh, the land uh, di divide. So the, this is the position, uh, cruising position of the car. So we randomly introduce a drift, the car drift, to, dri to drive the cars to the left or to the right. And the subject has to respond with either button press, for instance, in the MRI scanners, or the uh, steering wheel on the motion platforms, uh, driving simulators, to compensate the deviant and going back to the cruising position. So in this case, you know, um, the car was actually uh, was driven at a uh, constant speed. So randomly, we introduced this uh, uh, de land deviation event uh, at an equal probability to the left and to the right. So we have the behavior measurement, moment to moment, actually up to probably milliseconds resolution. So we have the deviation, we have reaction times for each event. We have response onset and offset. So now we can study the behavior. Okay. Um, so in this case, this is a one-hour experiment. You can see um, this is drift to the right and drift to the left, and the uh, green dot represent the onset of response. So subject trying to move the car back to the cruising position, and at the first beginning, very characteristically, uh, the subjects actually performed really well, and then we have intermittent sort of drowsy or alert episodes. So actually, subjects tend to have this about 20 seconds micro sleeps in and out the micro sleeps within 20 seconds. So then on top of that, we actually have a longer you know, um, uh, fluctuations in performance. Okay, and in this case, we can sort all the single trials according to reaction, reaction time. So this is all the trials, about 600 of them, you know, uh, lasting more than an hour. So then we call this part is low error or alert uh, portions and the, the later ones you know, is uh, drowsy patients. So in EEG analysis, as you know, one of the biggest problems in EEG analysis is this is actually a cartoon of the head. And we have a lot of sources in, your, in our brains. And each sensor actually uh, records mixtures of signals from all of the places. Okay, so this is like a cocktail party problems. You have microphones in the rooms. You have, more or less like the sensors on the scalp. And you have speakers more or less like the individual uh, brain sources. So, and we use the independent component analysis, which our group first applied to the EEG data analysis and functional meta analysis to tease apart those independent sources from the mixtures without knowing how the signals were mixed together or the online statistics of the sources. And then, this is, let me show you how we did that. This is raw data, and we're trying to find the unmixing matrix which will separate the time crosses of each individual sources. And the independent components also give you a scalp topographies, basically represent the projection of this source to the scalp sensors. And then we have um, the time crosses, or activation of the source, then we can time lock to the uh, deviation on set, on set. So we can pick a, a short interval, like six seconds, and we can do the time frequency analysis. So we have multiple trials, we can do time frequency analysis. Then we can sort all the EEG activities according to, with respect to the reaction time. Okay, so this is for the single subjects. And how we're going to do with multiple subjects, we actually use these two pieces of information, first is scalp topography, loosely tells you where this signal is coming from in the brain. And the PSD, power spectral density of each sources. Then you can group them across all the subjects, so trying to find the comparable brain networks across subjects. Then for each of the clusters, we can look at the event-related dynamics. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. So for instance, this is a lateralized occipital component cluster, and you can see the individual subjects, we can do the inverse solution trying to find where it is coming from, and we can group them. So this is sort of summaries of what we call tonic changes um, as a function of reaction time. So roughly speaking, 
this is a trial a subject response. It's really fast, this is really slow. So you can see alert, drowsy, this is a different frequency. So as you can see, the low frequency activity, the power of low frequency actually is elevated when the subjects take more time to res respond. So this is what we call tonic responses. And this is a phase six re responses. This is a time lock to event onset, cars start drifting. And you can see the suppression, cold color suppression, and the rebound, so increase again, uh, back to the, above the baselines after the deadline deviations onset. So this is a subject st starting response, response on onset. This is a response offset. You can see the huge drop and then coming back. So this is over 6 dB. OK, so I don't have time to show you other components, but this is a summary. You can see at different frequency bands how different components, clusters, their, their EEG dynamics varies with increased reaction time. So most of them actually increase. But if you look at even longer trials, I mean, RT trials, you will see actually the alpha activities start decreasing. So the second part actually talking about real time, oh, two minutes. OK, real time cognitive states monitoring. So we have actually looked at um, the correlation between the power spectra and the driving performance. As you can see, this is from different channels. And the two sessions from the same subject, you can see this is really reliable or stable, uh, reproducible across different days. And this is different subjects, but from subject to subject, it's very different. So what we did is we actually used principal component analysis to summarize the spectrum estimations and build a model for each individual. Then we can, for the subsequent sessions, we can real time estimate the moment to moment fluctuations in the driving performance. So this is just a sample. I have to speed up again. Um, this is uh, uh, actual driving performance measured by the moving average of the land deviation. Okay, if you take more time, you are going to have uh, greater values in the land deviations. So we take the uh, uh, 60 minutes, uh, 16, uh, 60 seconds moving average, uh, depends by one second. And so this is, um, after we've done that, we said, okay, if you can monitor the driving performance, and how can you do with it? So we actually delivers auditory feedback to the trials which subject fail to respond uh, within the three times of reaction times in the baseline. Okay, so basically, subjects, if subject fail to respond within the time limit, we half of times we deliver the feedback, half of times we don't deliver the feedback, then we can do the comparison. So in this case, if you can see that reaction times, this is the current trials, okay? Uh, of course, if you have a feedback, you're going to uh, agitate the subject's res responses to the uh, event, and this is, uh, current trial plus one means next trial, okay? So still, you can see the reaction times get improved. And how about the EEG? You can see that this is a baseline. This is before land deviation. This is the baseline um, differences. And in current trials, because the feedback has not been delivered, so you can see they are identical. And then the current trials plus one, you can see this big differences between the two, and it's statistically different. Um, and this actually, the the direction of changes toward to the alert trials, the average of alert trials. Okay, so then you can see that actually the EEG activities accompany the improvement of behavior. Um, one of the problems is nobody's going to wear this EEG cap, um, you know, eight hours a day while they're driving. So in the past four years, uh, my group has been trying to develop, build, and test mobile and wireless EEG uh, uh, cap. So this is what we're trying to do. We actually, this is our second generation. We're trying to build an EEG headband, which features, uh, this is a headband, features uh, dry sensors, um, uh, actually conductive soft tissues, or immense, and miniaturized um, <coughs> bioamp, an A2D converter, and uh, microcontroller and Bluetooth. So we also built our own DSP modules. The size of this is about two and a half inch by two inch, totally battery powered and portable. So this with, a, uh, with a micro Linux running on this DSP, and we can implement all the algorithms we develop. And so we can see the 
uh, cognitive state estimation on the LCD. On top of that, actually, this is, I'm going to show you a sample result. This is, this is actually the first generation EG cap, and it's a little bit bigger. And now we get it much smaller. So we send the signals to the DSP modules we built. And then this is a comparison between the actual performance and uh, estimated driving performance over time. You can see the correlations are really high. And this is a movie. This is the latest. You can see it's EG uh, headband. This is the holders for the regular electrodes or our dry electrodes. And underneath, we have a small circuit. And this is about one inch high. And this is microcontrollers and wireless telemetries. You can see we are, in this case, we're actually using the commercially available or clinically available e ECG sensors. And put it on, you can clock it. It's probably 20 seconds. And that's a reference. And this is, instead of using the DSP module, I actually use my cell phone. So we program a cell phone to receive signals to do online processing. This is the power spectrum density of the signal. And this is when subject gets drowsy. So we deliver feedback. To subject. So this is, is running on the symbiont um, cell phone like this. So that's an EEG, and subject get into the, the car. You can see the, all the movement and artifacts. So um, we have demonstrated tonic and phasic EEG spectral dynamics in response to land deviations during a continuous uh, sustained attention driving task. And we have also showed that arousing auditory feedback delivered to the cognitive challenge uh, subjects immediately educate, agitated uh, subject responses and to the uh, event. And also the improved behavior performance was accompanied by concurrent spectral uh, suppressions in the theta and, gamma, uh, and alpha bands of a lateral occipital component. And we also showed that continuous Accurate, non-invasive, and near real-time estimation of subjects' cognitive states is feasible in a realistic environment, operational environment, I'm sorry, missing a word. And it is also feasible to integrate um, novel dry soft sensors, uh, advanced single process algorithms, and miniaturized supporting hardware into a mobile and wireless cognitive state monitoring and management system. Thank you.